Greetings, friends. We are back for another prop build. And I'm going to build these a little bit different. I'm going to go along the adventure building this with you because most of my props are built on the fly. And it's a good way to show, you know, the thought process and how things go. So with what I want to build this week is a lock. And I want to make it out of EVA foam. So, you know, it, it'll be one of those things where... It will be all ornate. We'll have a nice lock hasp here. And I want it to be big because it's going to go in the treasure chest. So what we have to figure out is exactly how this lock will work and how everything will function into it. And this is where the thought process comes from in terms of how do we make this thing work properly? You know, because we're dealing with EVA foam. So the mechanisms are not as precise as you may want them to be because you're dealing with foam of course so let's say we're going to make these walls out of the 3 8 foam um the back out same thing uh the hasp i think in order for resilience we don't want to go with with uh standard foam like you know your typical uh styrofoam your rigid styrofoam so i think i'm going to do a laminated laminated here that way it'll allow me to have a bit of resilience and it makes it so it doesn't break as easy now the locking mechanism what would be a great locking mechanism so if we bring this down to here and we have those shafts come all the way through the easiest way to make a locking mechanism is to put some notches in and then if we put in uh let's see here let's go over to here if we have there's the wall this will be the post coming down now if we make a canned locking mechanism of just a square piece of foam or whatever in here with the key through it and then if what we do is we put a hole through the back here it'll allow us to I'm gonna make sure I'm in the center here that will allow us to put a key through the center and act as the axle for the actual locking mechanism and all you do is spin this out of the way of the notches in those center posts i think that's going to be a good way to go so that is our start i'll be back once i go into the computer and draw this up and they'll come back and discuss exactly what we decide to go on all right i went and drew all this up on the computer yay i'm going to be putting this down below as a link because this is pretty precise stuff and when you print this this is to scale so you can actually cut these pieces out and put them on the foam because on this this is going to be so important this part here and this part here and the cam what i'm going to do is i'm going to design a 3d printed key that i'll put up the actual 3d printed thing down below and on sawin.ca i'll make it so if you really want you can order a key i'll now print it for you and send it to you so what we're going to do here is you can see now that when this thing rotates this will be your church key channel and on the front you can see at the back there's just a circle well on the front one it has a full circle like this with the actual key path then this block here has an also notch out so when the key goes in the front of the key you know how you've got your typical like old school skeleton key it looks something like that so what happens is this part here goes through there and creates the axle. This part here is what will spin the mechanism. And then once you're past here, the key will end up about here when it's spun. And it'll spin both these out of the way counter clockwise. We may have to add some buffering in here and here just to stop this thing from wandering while it doesn't have a key in it. But it looks, it looks pretty snug at this point. And as you can see, um, everything else has been panned out. I'm going to start building this, get some foam cut down, and we will go along for the journey. And if I run into problems, of course, we will share them together. I'll be back. Now, once we have everything cut, get over here. Once you have everything cut out, you can see here, this here is the most important part of what we're going to be building initially. So what I did is I took two pieces of 3 8 EVA foam and laminated them together. And I make sure you sand this stuff off because, man, it just doesn't stick to anything. Now, I suggest you build this hasp and shackle first. So, like you can see here, if you look really closely, you can see the line there that is the two sides laminated together. 
And then I went through and I just dremeled the heck out of it to make it look like a really old piece of iron. And the fact that the opening on my treasure chest barely takes this size, so I had to kind of get aggressive with it. Now you can see down here how we have these notches. Like I said, super important. Everything, the whole locking mechanism is going to revolve around that. Now, we're going to move on to the actual, you know, lock body. As you can see here, all I have is glued on the one and a half inch styrofoam onto the back piece here. Now, we're going to be looking at how this fits into here. And as you can see, that is beautifully snug on the outside. And that's what we want, because when that piece in the middle cams in, it'll lock and hold that. All right. Now, we've got everything in place. You can see up here that these three pieces of foam are used uh, using this template that's on the file. And then what this allows you to do is you pretty much use these as guides. And once you're done, you can use a Dremel to f clear these out to make sure that your actual hasp falls into your lock pretty quickly and easily. And don't worry about see how that opened up at the bottom. Not a big deal. I put a piece of quarter inch foam up here and down here to correspond with this because here I was not having faith in my own design and I cut the corners off of here and in reality I should have left them on because I had to glue one of them back onto here using contact cement. Now what the whole point of this is and this is just by the way this is the heavier EVA foam. I know there's going to be a specific name for like a 200 pound EVA foam. I just know it is the Kid Block EVA foam, which is a bit heavier and a bit stronger. Now, you'll see that I did the split in the middle of this. Why? So I could use a saw to cut out this keyhole without struggling through an inch and a half of foam using like a knife or something. This worked out really well. So all I did is when I put my template on, I traced the keyhole. And then all I did was cut it out, glue it together, and I have my lock block. Now what happens is you'll see... How this goes into here it fits in snugly and that's what you want and you'll see on this side this is not as important this more is just opened up so it can spin when it's done this side let's see if I get the light here right this side is the important one you can see how this notch goes into that notch which we built on the hasp so when you put the key in and you turn this it frees up the hasp and allows the actual shackle to come out now, don't get me wrong, this is no, like, lock-picking lawyer level of lock where, you know, he can probably sneeze at this thing and it'll open it up. It's it's more for just the little bit of fun where you have the thought there's a challenge there, you know. In reality, you don't even need to do this. You can put two magnets at the bottom of the shackle and be done and make a lock. But, of course, I'm daft and silly, and sometimes it's fun to challenge yourself to build something that, you know, is a functional cammed lock design. And once it's in there, you'll see that it holds itself together really well. If you pull really hard, of course, it'll spin. You have to realize it's a lock made out of foam. We are not looking at, like, Fort Knox level of security. So the next step we're going to be doing is we're going to be putting the faceplate on, painting this up with a bit of black on the front so when the key goes in and you spin, you don't see that that green and yeah red because that might might just just a little tiny bit remove some of that uh what's a word i'm looking for uh immersement hey, there we go so we're going to be back once we've got this on you can really start having fun we can start sanding this down adding some details to the lock and we'll continue on i'll be back the lock is looking pretty close to being finished now all i've done is I put the front plate on making sure that you know everything lines up you can see through there and then I just used a Dremel and I did up all the texture on it you can do whatever texture you want or no texture it is up to you and then I finished up with just a coat of black spray paint I'm gonna be dry brushing this silver or gold depending on my mood and how I feel now this here is a key on the template you're gonna see an actual outline of the key that you need. You need to have this bump on it. This here is not as important in terms of length, but you do need to have it there. And then this is just enough so it clears the outside of the lock. This is just a piece of laminate flooring. I might 
just to use this. I might just sand off the rest of the surface here and turn this into the key because I kind of dig the rustic look and feel of it and it's easy. On top of that, there's going to be a 3D print file down for a key which I wanted to build, but I just ran out of time in this prop video to do so. It's there if you want to print it. It's all scaled properly. I just have not printed it yet. Now, this works out really well because you see, obviously, you put your key in and if you listen, that click is the cam on the inside spinning. And just like that, it releases it. Put it back in, make sure it's all the way down, spin, and it locks. You know, of course, you can brute force this thing if you pull it hard enough. It's foam. If you expect uh, Fort Knox to keep this together, you will be sadly mistaken, but this is a great, this is a great way of making a prop that is actually functional enough to be immersive. So say if you're doing like an escape room or something, this is all you need to keep this lock secured and safe. So regardless, I'm going to go through and be putting some gold trim up here, maybe some treatment around here that's going to be done in gold. I might do some silver dry brushing. Regardless, I'll be back with the finished lock and we will wrap this lovely thing up and I'll show it to you what it looks like on the treasure chest. See you in a few. We arrive at the finished lock. This thing turned out pretty cool. The decorations you see here are just done with EVA foam. You can do them however you want. I just did it simple to match the treasure chest from the previous video. And of course the key, this one is just, I made a laminate. I'm gonna paint this thing to make it all one. And the functioning lock is actually pretty darn slick. You can hear that it'll release, it'll open up. And then trying to do this while looking through the cameras harder. Spin it, lock it. Remember, it's only about a quarter turn that you, or an eighth of a turn that you do to lock and unlock. And just like that, it's finished. So, fun project. The mechanism being all foam is what interested me most about this project. Uh, things I would change. The cam on the inside, don't cut off the edges. I did it uh, as a, an abundance of um, safety. Turns out that it actually, I had to glue part of it back on. So that's about the only thing that would really change on this prop build uh and beyond that fun prop light you can use it as a as a lock on a lot of props without putting undue stress on them and that's it i can't really explain much more hope you had fun with this little bit of an odd different prop in a interesting outcome uh, so yes if you like the video, please remember to like. If you subscribe, that would be fantastic. If you really, really like me, there's a Patreon hiding somewhere down there for you ever wanted to, you know, throw me a few dollars a month to encourage me to keep on doing all these fun props. Well, actually, you don't have to encourage me. I'm doing them anyways. But, you know, money for materials is always wonderful. Regardless, thanks for tuning in, and I will see you on the next one. Have a good one, all.